What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. As we know, learning to identify chords is a process that involves a lot of experimentation and trial and error. So in today's video, we'll be running through 4 things you need to know to significantly improve your probability of guessing the correct chords. For simplicity's sake, this entire video will be in the key of C major, and I'll be assuming that you already know the key and melody of the song you are trying to figure out the chords for. The first thing you need to know in order to improve your chances of guessing chords correctly will be to know that diatonic chords appear a lot more than chromatic chords. Simply put, diatonic chords are chords that contain only notes inside our home key, while chromatic chords contain at least one note outside our home key. For instance, if our key is C major, we have 7 notes inside our home key, C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. From these 7 notes, we can make 7 possible diatonic chords, C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and B diminished. On the other hand, there are 5 notes outside our C major key, and any chord that contains even one of these notes is considered a chromatic chord. Our first 6 diatonic chords, excluding B diminished, appear much more than any other chromatic chord. To test this statement using a data-driven approach, I collected some data about different songs and their chord progressions from online sources like ultimategata.com using some Python programming and analyzed the chord progressions in these songs. For consistency's sake, every song in the dataset has been transposed to C major to make sure that we are not comparing apples to oranges. As we can see in this chart, the chords that appear the most are our 6 diatonic chords, C major, G major, F major, A minor, D minor, and E minor, followed by the other chromatic chords such as D major, D flat major, A major, and so on. As such, when we are just starting out in learning how to identify chords, we need to take note that diatonic chords appear the most and should probably try out the diatonic chords before the chromatic chords. More specifically, when guessing chords in a song, chances are a chord is one of the six diatonic chords. Of course, this insight works better for simple songs and becomes less true as songs become more difficult and jazzy. Here is the exact same chart, but more chords are shown. The simple pop songs belong to the left side here, while the more difficult jazzier songs belong to the right side here. Once again, diatonic chords make up the bulk of chords in most songs, and we can increase our chances of guessing chords correctly by trying out the diatonic chords first, then the chromatic chords. If you are interested in the programming side of things and how I scraped and collected data online, I've included some stuff in the description down below, but for now, let's move on. The second thing you need to know to improve your chances of guessing chords correctly is that many songs use the same few chord progressions, and that the more chord progressions you know well, the higher your probability of being able to guess chords correctly. To illustrate this, we'll be using the same dataset from the previous example. Here's a chart showing the percentage of songs against the total number of unique chords the song has. As we can see here, most songs only have 4, 5, or 6 chords. Some songs have 3, while others have 7, 10, or even 15. Still, 25% or a quarter of the songs here contain simply 4 chords, and more than half contains between 4 to 6 chords. As such, we can safely say that most simple pop songs contain probably less than 7 chords, which is good news for us if you are trying to guess the chords of a song. With this in mind, here are some common chord progressions used by many songs worldwide. The two most common ones being the C, G, A minor, F progression and the A minor, F, C, G progression. For each progression here, I've listed a bunch of examples that use them in the description down below, so do definitely check these songs out and give them a go if you haven't learned them before. As such, in order to familiarize yourself with these progressions, do experiment and improvise with them and progressively add them to your repertoire if you haven't already. The third thing we need to know in order to improve our probability of guessing chords correctly is that we can get some clues of what our chord is from the song's melody and also its surrounding chords. First, we can guess chords based on the melody note that lands together with the chord. Given a melody note, chances are that the chord that lands together with the melody note also contains a melody note. Take for example, Can You Feel The Love Tonight by Elton John here transposed to C major. These are the notes that land together with the chord, and our job now will be to try to guess the chords that land together with these notes. For the first note G here, based on the logic that chords tend to contain the melody note they land with, C major, E minor, and G major are more likely to be correct than the other chords, D minor, F major, and A minor. For the second note, D here, using the same logic, D minor and G major are more likely to be correct than the other chords, C major, E minor, F major, and A minor. Likewise for the third melody note, E here, C major, E minor, and A minor are more likely to be correct than the other chords. And for the fourth melody note, A here, D minor, F major, and A minor are more likely to be correct. As such, we have narrowed down our choices from 6 chords per bar to 2 or 3 chords per bar, and from a total of 1,296 possibilities to 54 possibilities. And thus, we are left with experimenting with the different possibilities and picking the best sounding one. In addition to the melody note, we can also use our knowledge of common chord progressions and the surrounding chords to make a good guess of what the correct chords are. After experimenting a little, we find that C major is most likely the correct answer for the first bar. Looking at the second bar, we have two possibilities, D minor and G major. Based on our knowledge of common chord progressions, 
we know that more songs like to lead from C major to G major than from C major to D minor. I'm not saying that the C major chord cannot lead to the D minor chord. I'm just saying that because it is more common for the C major chord to lead to the G major chord than the D minor chord, the G major chord in this context is more likely to be the correct chord. Sure enough, after some experimentation, D minor just doesn't seem to sound right here, and we pick G major. Moving on to the third bar, we have three possibilities, C major, E minor, and A minor. Based on our knowledge on common chord progressions as well as a little experimentation, A minor seems like the obvious choice. Lastly, we have our fourth bar, which has also three possibilities, D minor, F major, and A minor. By now, as we have the first three chords, it might be fairly obvious what our fourth chord should be based on our knowledge of common chord progressions. After a little experimentation, We decide that the F major chord is most likely the correct chord. Notice that guessing the first chord seems to be the most uncertain, but as we figure out the other chords and progressively collect more information, it becomes easier to guess the chords behind. Of course, this method does not work all the time. Like the other methods, this method tends to work more for easier pop songs rather than the more difficult jazzier ones, as harder songs like to experiment with more complex chords and notes. The fourth thing we need to know in order to improve our probability of guessing chords correctly is that each chord has a certain feel to it and we can learn to identify this by improving our relative pitch. Let's start with the six diatonic chords. I've written in words what each chord sounds like in the context of our key, C major. Of course, all of this is pretty subjective and may not translate that well through words. As such, here are a few ways to improve your relative pitch and hence your ability to identify the feel of each chord. Firstly, you can transcribe more music. Here, transcribing music refers to listening to a song, trying to figure out its melody and chords, and writing it down. By transcribing more music, you continue to exercise your relative pitch and familiarize yourself with more chords and notes, which gets internalized over time into your brain, thus improving your ability to recognize notes and chords. Next, you can also try to improvise more on the piano. Here, improvising refers to composing something on the spot and playing it out without prior preparation. When you learn a new chord progression that you like, I recommend trying to improvise with this new progression, as it forces you to understand how exactly this new progression sounds and works, thus also improving your ability to recognize this progression should you encounter it again in the future. Over time, as you become able to improvise over more chord progressions, so does your ability to recognize chords in general. In addition, you can also use ear training apps and tools online to improve your relative pitch. Pitch Garden has its very own ear trainer that you can find at pitchgarden.com slash ear trainer, where notes or chords are played for you and your job is to identify it. Do check it out if you are interested. Also, learning new songs in general is a fantastic way of building up your relative pitch, whether you learn it by ear, by googling the chords, or by downloading sheet music online. The important thing is being aware of the chords behind the melody, how they sound and feel, and being able to learn and internalize this. By adding more chords to your repertoire, you are essentially making it easier for you to recognize chords and chord progressions in the future. To add on, don't forget to measure your progress. I recommend using a bunch of metrics like the general speed of learning a new song by ear, the ability to improvise comfortably with a new chord or chord progression you have just learned, the ability to recognize a chord you have just learned in a new context, and so on. I know I keep mentioning this on this channel, but learning to play by ear is a marathon rather than a sprint, and consists of many small skills that we need to learn rather than just one big skill. We have to be consistent and play the long run game if we want to improve. With that, thanks for watching, and I hope this video has provided you with value in some way. If it has, do consider giving this video a like and subscribe if you don't wish to miss more of such videos, and also because it will help out this channel in the long run. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.